there's only three or four things that cause bearings to run. You know, I've heard it said many times on the dyno, like, ah, oh, you ran my bearing, or I want to come and tune by you because the other tuner ran my bearing three times on the dyno. You look at the guy and you say, who's building your engine? And he says, me, and you go, there's your problem. <laughs>
then because it's metal on metal, it generates heat and it just seizes. The other pistons are pushing the crank. If the conrod can't turn, it just snaps it off. There's only three or four things that cause bearings to run. You know, I've heard it said many times on the dyno, like, ah, oh, you ran my bearing, or I want to come and tune by you because the other tuner ran my bearing three times on the dyno. You look at the guy and you say, who's building your engine? And he says, me. And you go, there's your problem. And the problem is, to run a bearing, you either have dirt in the engine when you built it, okay, which is not in an engine from, for example, Mike's place. It, there was no dirt, the engine wasn't opened, so dirt won't be one. But if you rebuild the engine, there might be a lot of the guys, they don't take all the oil galleries out to wash them out. And so you skim the head, the little pieces of metal go down into the oil galleries, and they sit there. And now you wash the block, but you're just washing it around inside the engine. You need to take the end caps out, take pipe cleaners, and clean the oil galleries out. Otherwise, those little pieces of metal get onto the bearing, and they cut the bearing, and the minute the bearing loses oil pressure, it starts knocking and you run a bearing. The main reasons for bearings are dirty built engine, number one, it's common. Incorrect clearance. So the guys, the guys, they take a crank, they don't measure, you can plastic gauge it, which is a little piece of wax that you put in between and you bolt it together to measure that comma 05 clearance. Or you do it with like vernier calipers, and gauges, you can measure it. Most of the guys just, they buy new bearings and put it back together and say, I've changed the bearing. But the problem is the bearing is now the right size, but the crank has worn smaller. So now your brand new engine has this clearance for it to knock a bearing. So the guys are like, but I put new liners in and it ran on the dyno the first time. And you're like, what was the clearance? And they go, it was new. And you're like, what was the clearance? And they say, well, I didn't measure it. Nine out of 10, they've got a clearance issue. So then what you do is you take the crank, you get it cut 10 thou, which is 0.25 of a millimeter, they cut it smaller, and you put thicker liners in. So your clearance is now right. There's, there's, nothing's weaker. You took like comma two of a millimeter off the crankshaft. It's, it's just as strong. It's fine. And you put a slightly thicker liner in. So you buy a 10 thou liner. They still measure it in thousandths of an inch. I don't know why, because we are. Sometimes it says 0.25 on an ACL, but anyway. So what you do is you then cut the crank smaller, and you put a thicker liner to make that clearance correct. So it's either dirt, clearance issue, oil pressure issue. Your pump isn't supplying the right oil pressure because you need a certain amount of pressure to keep that line of oil there. Or you've run out of oil, so it's too low. So what happens is the guys throw donuts, 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 and they fill the cylinder, tap it cover up with oil. Now your four liters or five liters that were in the sump are now up in the cylinder head because you keep turning the one way and the oil drains down the side of the block and those holes, it can't drain because the oil is being pushed to the other side. So you pump the cylinder head full of oil and you end up sucking air at the bottom. And then you put aerated oil onto the bearing and then you run a bearing. So if you were to go right around the oval all the time, you would have the oil being forced down to the sump. If you went left, it's going to keep it up in the cylinder head because it can't, the G-forces of the engine are holding, the, the oil is just gravity feedback. It's, there's no pump. So, so you're quite lucky that the oval runs that way. That way around. If you take an E36 M3 and you have it full on oil, and you go left around the oval, and you go boss with the car. Hundred percent. You fill the tappet cover, it hits out the breather, and it'll it just smokes like hell, and it wets your air filter with oil. I've done it many times on many different ones. A lot of the guys speaking about um, racing cars, like drag racing and stuff, if your engine is going to spend a lot of time at very high RPM. You must run your oil over full. Now everyone will say, don't ever run your oil over full because the crank hits it and it foams it. And then you're sucking this aerated oil, then you run a bearing. If we were to take your car on the dyno and run it at 5,000 RPM for a while, it's pumping oil up to the cams and it takes time for that oil to come back down and you'll find that your oil is actually off the bottom of the dipstick. If you're racing a car, running at sort of half a liter or three quarters of a liter over full when the car is standing in the pits is absolutely acceptable because when you are high RPM all the time, the, the, the oil will, is, a lot of it is stuck up in the cylinder head and then you don't end up with oil surge at the bottom. So um, that's, that's the reason the guys run bearings and, and it's these small engines that are second hand that the guys can rev and the bearing clearance is incorrect and then they rev it. So bearing liners are very cheap. Plastic gauge to measure it is like very cheap. So if you buy a VVL or a VTEC or a K20 or any engine that's going to be revving, 
drop the sump off and check the bearing clearances. If they're wrong, put new liners in. If, if you check it and it's still wrong, then the crank must come out and be cut. But if you replace the bearings, you get your bearing clearances correct. And you either replace the oil pump, and then there's a relief valve that actually it's a mechanical thing with a spring. And you can, you can also space the relief valve to lift the oil pressure, because now you're going to spend lots of time at high RPM. Okay? So you can make another bar's worth of oil pressure at high RPM. And if you do that, then you won't run a bearing because your clearances are correct and you've got higher oil pressure. If I was racing your car, I would, I would 100%, if you've got your low mark and your full mark, when it's standing in the pits and all the engine oil is in the bottom, you can run it, I would, I would add a liter oil. I'd run it, I'd run it like, probably like, at, at least half of that empty to full above full. Wow. You must remember on a BM, it's got a, if you look at the, the if you, when you, next time you build the engine, your dipstick goes into your sump, yeah. okay? And you will see, I'm not sure on the, on the three to eights, definitely M3, and not those cars, those, the older one that goes into the block. On an M3, or that E36 engine, you've got a dipstick tube that goes yes. all the way into, yes. into the, yes. Bottom, yes. Right the bottom, which means the dipstick won't get splashed with the oil while the engine's running, okay, because it's in a casing. Yes. Some cars, they, they, they've just got the hole into the, into the block, the dipstick comes into the cavity, and the oil's being splashed around, and so you can never check oil level while the car's running. But on a BMW like yours, you can actually start the car, rev it, and you can check the oil while it's running, and you'll see that the oil is like under the minimum mark, which, if you check, is miles away from the crankshaft. Yeah. So you can definitely overfill it. I wouldn't overfill a car that's idling in traffic all the time yes. because the oil is going to be hit by the crank because at idle, the oil pressure is one bar and it's like battling to get it up to the head and there's, the oil is mostly lying in the sump. So now you have this overfull, it's hitting it, it's turning it into milkshake and froth and then your engine sucks that and that's very bad for your engine. So 100% an overfilled dipstick or an overfilled engine is very bad but not on a race engine. On a race engine, you overfill it because you want the engine to run at its full mark while it's revving and running. Yeah. And that's why you sometimes get, the, if it does froth it and the head, it doesn't come down, you sometimes get breathing and smoke on race engines and stuff because you, you want to run the oil at a, full, at a fuller level. Okay, so if you've, let's say you, as you say, the, a, a Nissan Sentra or a Golf, or you buy this 15,000 Rand car and you want to go drag racing with it, and what should you, what should you do? If I bought a car and I'm going to be revving it the hell out of it all the time because I'm going to be, I bought it for, to race with, so I want to rev it. I would take the sump off and check the bearings. If I bought a BMW M5 V10, I would take the sump off and check the bearings. If I bought a, any car that I'm going to rev, I would take the sump off and check the bearings. At some time in its life, it ran low on oil, so the guy didn't check the oil. It was maybe a, it was maybe a delivery car, you know, like a it was an alert engine spares delivery golf or something. And the guy just driving lots of k's, and and it ran low on oil, and it sucked air, and it damaged the bearings. The only thing besides melting a piston, but the only thing that really breaks an engine beyond repair is if it runs a bearing and it throws a conrod, because the crankshaft is damaged, the conrod is damaged, the piston is damaged, you need another engine. If your bearings are good and the engine can rev, then the conrod's not going to come out the side and knock your starter motor off, so that's great. If it starts smoking, so what? If the car starts smoking, often what happens is, your, people don't realize, but a piston, the, conrod's, the conrod stretches as you rev, because this half a ton becomes one ton and everything, it goes higher in the, in the bore. So everyone wants uh, the old lady's car that's never been revved, the worst car you can want to go racing with if it's done lots of mileage. Because the piston ring gets to a certain point in the top of the bore and it comes down, a certain point at low RPM, okay? And it wears a line, a ridge, in the bore. The first time you rev that engine to 7,000, it goes higher and it breaks the ring lands because the ring hits this ledge and it says, I can't go further, and it snaps the ring off. If you've got an engine that's been revving its whole life, The, the ridge is higher. If you said to me, I've got a lady with this engine that's got 200,000 Ks on, but it was only driven by an old lady, or you've got a car that's been revved to hell and gone its whole life, and I wanted it to go racing with, I wouldn't take the old lady's car. Am I driving? Muriel, you are driving. Yes, I run bearing after bearing after bearing after bearing. And you're like, 
I had a guy here the other day, if he's watching this, he's on it, and he wanted to go racing with a car a bit and stuff, but he's just run bearing after bearing after bearing, and he said, but he bought this 3 to 8 because the guys are racing them at Kalani and stuff, but he's just having problems, and I said, but there's something wrong with your engine. A 3 to 5, that 6-cylinder BM, they don't run bearings, they don't have a bearing problem. The higher revving M3s and things like that, they do because there's more strain on the bearings, but even your race car, you're only revving to 6.6. So when I say to you, lift the revs to 7.2, there's more bearing strain. If you've never checked your bearings, and maybe it's a good time to check them before you lift the revs to 7.2, and make sure the clearance is correct. But the thing is, if your car is continually running bearings, you've got a clearance problem, or all of the bearing metal that's in the engine wasn't cleaned out properly. And the big culprit always is oil coolers that are unfiltered. So what happens is the guy runs a bearing, all that bearing metal is in the engine and it goes through the oil cooler. Now the oil cooler's got bearing metal lying in it. They rebuild the engine beautifully and they just put that all on and the first time you start it, all that metal goes back into the engine and it stops the relief valve because all oil pumps are unfiltered. They've got a little mesh, but those metal goes through the mesh. And then it damages the oil pump, gets stuck relief valve, no oil pressure, boof, the engine runs again and everybody relies on the oil light. That oil light comes on at half a bar. You need, when you're revving, you need four bar, four and a half bar, five bar, you know? So if your bearings were wearing and you were revving and only had one bar oil pressure when you're revving at 6,000, you're going to run a bearing 100%, but your light won't be on because it only comes on at half a bar. So it's just no oil pressure, start the car, goes over half a bar, the light goes out. You've got oil pressure. You've got more than half a bar oil pressure, yes, but you don't know how much you've got. So actually, having said that, that's probably a really good thing to tell people to put in a, any car you want to go racing and stuff, oil pressure gauge. Because your engine health, the health of your bearings, which is pretty much the only thing that's going to destroy the engine, is reliant on oil pressure. So very seldom have I seen engines run bearings where the oil pressure is constant all the time. So let's say you know when, you're, when, the, when the oil's cold, the pressure will be very high. But let's say you know when my oil temperature is up to 70, 80, 90 degrees operating temperature, I've got when I'm revving, so for you on the racetrack, whenever I look at the oil pressure gauge and I'm revving and racing, I've got four and a half bar oil pressure. Okay, fine, I haven't run a bearing yet, that's what I've got. The day you look and you see, why have I only got four? I've lost half a bar somewhere along the line. Either the oil pump is battling or the bearing clearances have got bigger then you need to say, I need to check, or keep monitoring. And if it goes to 3.8 and it keeps on dropping, as the engine gets older, the pressure will drop, drop. It's time to drop the sump and check the bearings. And you'll hear any guy that races a car for a season, let's check the bearings. Let's check the bearings. That's all you ever hear. Because the rings, you can do a compression test, check your rings, and if it's not smoking, your compression is good, you don't have to strip the engine. But there is no way to check a bearing other than to strip it. So oil pressure is one, and if the guys really want to get fancy, you can have your oils tested. These engines that come from wherever, and they just stick them in, and they rev them. And there's no oil pressure gauge. That you don't know what the oil pressure is. You have no idea, and that thing runs a bearing. You know, if, I, if they had an oil pressure gauge in the car, and I put it in the dyno, and I did a power, and I saw 2.8 bar at high, you're like, whoa, stop the bus. There's a problem. But all you need to do is have mechanical oil pressure gauge in the car so that you can monitor your current oil pressure. And the minute the oil pressure starts dropping while you're revving, you need to ask why. Yeah, you know? of course. And, and a guy waiting for it to get to half a bar, hmm, he's going to have a Conrad come out the side <laughs> first. <laughs>